one of the big stories at NAB 2015 was the Solo from 3DR. It was the promise of having a drone that you wouldn't have to replace every year. One that you could have mission modules that could be replaced so you could change your drone from a sport flyer to a, a videography platform, even to, say, an infrared detection unit. Well, it took a little longer to get the technology perfected, but thankfully, it's here now. I'm speaking with Colin Gwynn from 3DR. Colin, you did a fantastic demonstration for us last year where you, you actually flew the Solo in the 3DR cage and it was an amazing machine. Uh, the ability to, even in this horrible, horrible environment where everything is jammed and we don't get GPS signal, of having the, the craft basically pilot itself. You say take off, you say fly this path, and then it does it for you. How has it been this last year? Because I know you've had to really sort of refine the technology. What has 3DR been busy at the last 12 months? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Well, so first, uh, thanks for having me on the show. It's uh, always good to, to chat. Um, and I can say that it's been an exciting year. Uh, it's, you know, we, we, um, we bit off a, a big challenge yes. in, in trying to create something that's not just another Me Too drone that, you know, really does something different that can really be a platform that'll, that allows, you know, our users to grow with the experience. And, you know, you know our, our vision for Solo was the ability to have somebody either own a Solo or a couple of Solos and have them outfitted in different ways just depending on what you're looking to accomplish, right? It's, it's, it's more of developing the drone around the user experience instead of, hey, we've got some cool technology, let's try to package it into a drone and sell it. It was more, what do users want to do with these things and what do our users want and how can we, how can we solve for that? And we knew that we wouldn't be able to develop all the different technologies ourselves. And so from the beginning, when we first started you know, laying out what Solo would be, uh, we wanted to make sure that there was an accessory bay. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure that there was a gimbal bay, that it didn't just you know, have a built-in camera, one single camera. We wanted to make sure the battery wasn't captured so that there could be you know, slightly different shapes if needed. And what that allowed for is for us to start working with other partners. So you know, this year the story is all about, hey, last year we announced the product and we said we're going to make this better and better and this is just the very beginning because we've got these powerful Linux computers on board, we've got a powerful Linux computer in your hand. And those two computers work together to kind of drive the entire experience. And, you know, now we're actually starting to utilize a lot more of that because, you know, so Kodak has a new uh, 360 virtual reality rig set up. So there's actually a right. 360 camera on yeah. top and bottom. And then it stitches out all the props and legs. So you have a full, perfect spherical view with no dark spot anywhere. Um, we've got the FLIR view working on a gimbal uh, that's commanded by our, by our onboard computer. So now you can do smart shots and orbits and multi-point cable cams. So if you're doing you know, certain types of search grids and things like that, uh, working with the FLIR camera instead of just visual. Uh, same thing, we're integrating with uh, Parrot's new Sequoia for NDVI and multispectral. Um, we're, uh, we're working with Sony. We just released uh, very recently a, a new camera called the RC10C with, uh, with Sony, which is you know, an APS-C size sensor, 20 right. megapixel right. imager for high quality photo mosaics. And, um, and that's on the imaging side. Then you've got you know, super bright LED lights from Felix that um, you know, come by our booth. There's some videos of what you can do that's with That's a new the use case that we're it's seeing here at NAB. very NAD. cool. You, yeah. Yeah, the ability to basically have a light tower that you can hover exactly where you want it and you get perfect lighting even in the, in the middle of the night. That's right. You combine that with a tether and now you can put a light up in the air for six hours. Mm -hmm. No problem. We flew that solo on, on a tether for 43 days straight. <laughs> Kept okay. it in the air. Yeah, all right. That's, so, that's proven you know, tech. It, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are some people who might say that the greatest strength of the Solo is also the one that keeps it in development for so long, which is we see drones that might be cargo drones that you can strap a camera to, or they might be camera drones that you might be able to modify for cargo, but they're definitely created for a specific purpose. Exactly. Whereas the Solo, the, the most ambitious part was this idea of the accessory bay. Yes. I want to give you a bare bones platform with high capabilities that has a mission computer that you can tell what the drone should be doing and then you strap on the module, whatever it's going to be, the, the, uh, the PTZ for the camera or the cargo bay holding the FLIR or yep. the, the extra battery that's going to you know, light up 10,000 lumens of light from uh, LED sources. That's right. But in doing that, 
you've, you've essentially guaranteed that you will never reach the end of development. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of the point of it is that we, we didn't want to look at it as a you know, one and done type deal. Okay, whatever we can finish by this date, Solo is what Solo is. Now let's hurry up and start on Solo 2. It was like, okay, we have Solo done to a point where and it was, it was this striking the balance between ready to fly out of the box and simple completely you know built out of the box there's no construction necessary you know like like your kind of do-it-yourself home kits where you can put different payloads on we wanted this to be ready to fly right out of the box with you know live hd streaming to your phone hdmi output from the controller you know but have that ability to grow over time and so when we finished solo we didn't start working on solo 2 we started working on all of the the additional software we wanted all the additional smart shots the augmented reality the smart rtl you know, and then that's on the software side, and then our hardware teams were working with partners on, you know, creating new cameras and new, right. you know, tethers and parachutes and 3D, you know, 360 rigs. And so, you know, to me, it's like looking at different use cases, right? And and, you know, I was talking to someone uh, yesterday that does search and rescue, and you know, he started kind of putting together all these pieces in his head. And it's kind of like, wait a second, so we could take a solo, and then put a, a FLIR, you know, thermal camera on it and then have it tethered to, say, a Honda generator in the back of a pickup truck, right? Flying 100 feet over the truck, using follow me mode to the, to the iPad that would be you know, in the, on the dash, and then turn on free look, so it's not just looking at the truck, you can look around wherever you want, yet the, the GPS device keeps solo above the truck, you know, or out to the side, looking down into the woods or whatever off of a cliff, and you could be driving along at 15, 20 miles an hour and just scanning thermal imagery to the to the either side of your vehicle and i mean he's like you don't realize how incredible like how groundbreaking this is one person could be driving a truck you know looking at an ipad mini or something like that and getting a thermal image directly i mean it's crazy you know so it's all about combining all the different technology and the different pieces of hardware to solve for whatever you're trying to accomplish it was interesting the uh, united states I, i'm not sure if it was not the military but i believe it was fema was looking for anyone, a company, an individual who can create a drone that could take off from a truck, could do a search and rescue pattern uh, with FLIR sensors. They were specifically thinking about using this for, say, flood relief or for, you know, hurricane recovery. And, and then report back to the truck and, uh, and be a one-man search and rescue team. And, and I was thinking, yeah. when they released that, that the proposal, I didn't I was see like, that. We could definitely like, do that. Minute. <laughs> you can do that right now with a solo. We can do that right now with a solo. And, and yeah. okay, for, for the folks who maybe did not watch our 2015 NAB special, and they didn't see all the capabilities, because we actually demonstrated. This wasn't just talk. This was you showing me in the cage. One of the, the prime features of the solo is the fact that you have multiple computers on board. And I think this, this is one of the keys to the flexibility of the platform. Yep. You can dedicate one computer just to flying the solo. It keeps it in the air, it makes sure it does all the, the, the things that it needs to do not to fall out of the sky. And then you can dedicate one computer for the mission. And it could be, I want you to fly this wire back and forth and keep That's your right. camera pointed in this direction. Or, as you said, it could be reprogrammed to do search and rescue. Now it's interfacing with my FLIR sensor, or it's interfacing with my LiDAR sensor. That's right. You really wanted to make sort of the Lego yeah. for, for, for drone hobbyists. That's right, and, and we knew, we knew even when we first started developing it, you know, a couple of years ago now, that, you know, the use cases for drones are gonna be expanding beyond what we know even people are gonna wanna do with them, right? And, you know, so we wanted to have a platform that would be, that would be flexible enough to be used for, you know, agriculture and, and you know, construction and, and, you know, creating 3D models or, or photo mosaics, but then maybe you take it on the weekend and get some nice looking video of your vacation, you know? So it's, it's something that can be used, just like you said, it's the Lego of drones. So you can, you know, really customize it to whatever your use case is. And, you know, and that's kind of our, you know, our, our segment of the market, right? I mean, I tell customers and I tell our resellers all the time, you know, there's no one drone that solves it all. And so right. I'm not gonna say Solo is the best drone. It's just Solo might be the best drone for certain use cases. If if somebody walks into your store and says, I just want a drone to fly around in my backyard and see from the sky. Well, Solo might be overkill for them. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of low cost drones that are just have a camera and fly around. And you get a nice live feed and they're a great deal, you know? But if somebody's wanting to, you know, come in and say, look, I wanna, I wanna do work with my drone. I wanna, create content, I want to create shots, 
and I want to move on to the next location, okay, well, that, that's solo. And that's, that's what we're really developing for is people that are using their drone more for a purpose. Yeah. My know-how co-host, uh, Brian Burnett, the Cranky Hippo, is currently running our, uh, our TriCaster. But uh, we get questions all the time from our audience because we build drones on yeah. our show. Uh, well, what's the drone for me? And it's always a, it's a difficult question to ask because the answer is you should have multiple drones. You should you should have your first drone, which is the nearly indestructible yes. one, because yes. you have to learn how to fly. Then get yourself a, a slightly more capable drone, maybe a racing drone, which is going to be different than the drone that carries your camera. Yes. And uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. Anytime a manufacturer comes out and says, this is the only drone you need, yeah. inevitably they're wrong. Yeah. But Solo's coming out and saying, hey, you know what? Once you've grown up past the toys, and you want to do some work, we've got a platform that we think you could, if you've got the skill and the inclination, you could make it do exactly what you want it to do. That's right. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. Is that, you know, if, if you have if you have the inclination and you're willing to say, okay, what combination of, of hardware can I use? Like, wow, I can pair this new smart shot with this right. tether, with this new sensor, and I can accomplish exactly what I'm looking to accomplish without having to go out and try to get some custom thing developed. And so, yeah, it, it just keeps getting more flexible literally every month. And, and there's, a lot of, there's a lot of hardware partners we're working with right, with right now that we have, aren't showing their stuff at the show this year because it's a few months out still. Right, right. But there are lots of software and lots of hardware that's still being worked on that will be coming out throughout the course of this year that's just gonna keep making Solo more powerful. You know, I, I can say that you know, it, it's going to be another calendar year until there's a whole new platform. You know, right. we are going to keep making Solo better. I'm speaking with Colin Gwynn from 3DR. He is, uh, well, he is, I think, their, their best advocate. He is the man who uh, has grown up with drones. He has really started this industry back with your, your previous company, who we won't mention. You can Google it if you like. <laughs> it's fine. Um, and, uh, you know, you've been at the forefront of the cutting edge of drone technology as it's made the transition from oddity to real commercial useful tool sure could you please tell our audience where they can find out more about solo where they can find out more about 3dr and definitely where they might be able to, to finally see one to try one to, to look at the capabilities absolutely yeah sure so uh, 3dr.com is a good starting point uh, you can our website 3dr.com you can check out the solo there you know see lots of different videos um, and then also you know to what we really like is for you know, customers to go in and talk to somebody about it and see it in person. And so we, you know, we've taken, you know, having a, a good retail presence worldwide very seriously. And so we've got these really cool point of sale kiosks that actually have a simulator built in and you can fly the solo in the store, you know, in this simulated environment. And, you know, there's different buttons that play the different videos that really try to educate the customer about what this platform is. And so, you know, Best Buys, uh, REI, Dick Sporting Goods, uh, Cabela's, all you know, camera shops, B and H, Adorama, Precision, Sammy's, you know, so uh, all over the camera chains. Um, obviously, hobby shops carry them as well. Um, so you know, yeah. really, we're, we're we're kind of all over the place. But you can start at 3dr.com and and do the dealer locator, find out you know somewhere that's in your country or your you know your area where you can go see one in person. Colin, yeah. thank you so very much for spending time with us. Absolutely. Thank I, you. I, I really appreciate it. I know our audience is excited by your product because they've been asking for this kind of a platform for the longest time. I know my co-host and I, are, we're just we're chomping at the bit to finally get one of these in the air. I mean, uh, after last year, it was well, a, let's do a it. teaser. Yeah. And uh, again, best of luck to you. And please continue to develop tools for, uh, for this platform that we love. Thank you. I appreciate that.